everyone. We're at Lexington, Kentucky here this morning on a pretty warm day with uh, an old friend of ours, uh, Michael Blowen, and uh, we're uh, very anxious to be here with him. Um, we're actually currently in their new barn that uh, is amazing, and uh, we're going to let him uh, tell you a little bit about it. Thank you, Bill. It's great to have you back, talk of the track. A lot of things have happened since your last visit. Most notably, a lot of really great new horses, including Hall of Famer uh, Lava Man, who came to us uh, right after this past Breeders' Cup when he brought Hot Rod Charlie, led Hot Rod Charlie over to the starting gate at the, in the Breeders' Cup Classic, and the next day or two he was here. So he didn't have to come far, just from Keeneland over to here. And uh, we're very grateful to have him. And, and his new best pal is a horse people may remember named Ruler on Ice, uh, who won the uh, Belmont Stakes in surprising fashion on a, a wet day at, at, at Belmont Park. And they're, but they're buddies now. That's part of the fun of this whole thing, is that you get to see these horses in a whole different environment. And it's very interesting to see them become horses again, uh, rather than simply uh, race horses. Don't get me wrong, I like to drink and I like to gamble and I like the sport. Uh, uh, but this is a cool part to be part of, too. Well, uh, Old Friends is really an asset to the racing industry uh, because everybody wonders what happens to the horses after their racing career. And uh, for the most part, a lot of them uh, get to come here and it's, it's a real blessing. And, a, and in turn, a lot of visitors get to come here and see them. So it, it is a really good asset. One of the things, though, uh, about the barn that we're currently sitting in, uh, for, uh, currently there's big screens where you can see videos. Uh, and also, right behind us here, you'll see a, a showcase. And I'm going to let Michael tell you about that in a minute. Well, we were, Bobby Frankel was always a big supporter of ours. One of the first really famous horses uh, they ever allowed us to retire to old friends was a wonderful horse named Ruhlman, R-U-H-L-M-A-N-N. -N. He was out, also owned by uh, one of our other supporters, Jerry Moss, who unfortunately just passed away a, a week ago, a week and a half ago now. Uh, Jerry was a great guy. And when, when Bobby passed away, he, he left us uh, some money, and he also left us about 95% of his trophies. And that's what this collection basically represents. I mean, on the top shelf are the trainers' trophies for the Breeders' Cup that he won with horses like Squirtle Squirt and Ginger Punch and Starine and Go Zapper and Awesome Again. So it's, it's pretty impressive. And this is, just the, this is just the tip of the iceberg. One of the things I'm proudest of is this Japanese uh, lettering here. And that was given to us by our friends in Japan as fans of old friends know, we, we, when we started out, one of the, our objectives was to bring horses home from overseas that were famous American racehorses so people could visit them in their re in retirement. And we worked, that worked out really, really well and brought home horses like Warren Bloom on my hat and Charismatic and Sunshine Forever. And, uh, and what's really great is the the Japanese Breeders Association and the Japanese Racing Association understood the value of opening up these horses to their fans once their racing and breeding careers were over. And so now they have an old friends in Japan. And it's called Old Friends Japan. And they have some horses there. And uh, most recently, the whole contingent of the Japanese racing authorities were here. They were here mostly to see, uh, see about buying some stallions and bringing them back to to Japan, but they stopped over here and they want especially to see Silver Charm because Silver Charm's our most famous horse. He's my favorite horse. He might be my favorite living thing. <laughs> but uh, so, but, much <laughs> yeah, so much for everything else. <laughs> what can I tell you? When you get a certain age, you just tell the truth. Um, I tell people I'm the luckiest person in the world, maybe in the universe, because I'm the only person with Silver Charm in my backyard. Uh, but anyway, Silver Charm came from Japan, and they were, and, and, and they, they, they came to visit, and they came to see Silver Charm. 
So now we're working on since they've got a good place in Japan now we don't have to uh, we don't have to work as diligently about getting some of the horses back to America from Japan. So we started to work with my friend June Park and the, and the South Koreans about bringing some horses home. We were very fortunate a few months ago to be able to, to re, re, uh, re, rehome any given Saturday. And he's a marvelous horse. And every time we get a new horse, we get some of the older visitors come back to see the new horses. And it just keeps this place a lot livelier. Well, just to have a break in the conversation here a second, you mentioned Silver Charm. How old is Silver Charm now? Silver Charm is the oldest living Derby winner and the oldest living Preakness winner at the ripe old age of 29. Wow. Yeah, he's, uh, Silver Charm is 29 and his nemesis, Touch Gold, of course, for racing fans that go back as far as we do. In 1997, Silver Charm, was had, after he'd won the Derby and the Preakness, was going for the Triple Crown that year in the Belmont, and uh, Touch Gold beat him by about a foot and a half and uh, ruined his triple crown. So for a long time, I held it against Touch Gold, but now the Touch Gold's here, and, and, uh, and he and Silver Charm get along well. I just take it as an object lesson that the horses get along a lot better than humans, <laughs> and they, they don't carry grudges, which is very nice. Well, one of the things you might be wondering is we're sitting in uh, their new barn here, and it's got all the modern conveniences, uh, restrooms, water fountains, and and uh, cement floor. I don't know if that's cement, actually, but... It's something special, I know. Yeah, something yeah. special. And uh, so you might be wondering, do they keep horses in here? And I'll let Michael address that. Well, the horses don't get to stay in here. We have one stall here we're going to say for uh, special occasions. We have a star of the day. There's a star in a, uh, a stall in a runout paddock at the other side, side of the barn. But mostly it's going to be for human activities. They built a stage over here, and... And with the video screens, people will be able to come in and push, push a button and see all these horses in their uh, highlights of their careers. And uh, people have done amazing jobs. And the Abercrombie Foundation uh, gave us $500,000 in matching funds to, to rebuild this place. And Boyd Browning over at Phasic tipped and spearheaded that campaign along with Corey Johnson, a horse owner who used to own uh, Kentucky Downs. They, they really took it upon themselves to make sure that this was going to be a a meaningful project and so you know eventually once we things get going we'll have weddings in here and we'll have other events and other ways to financially support the farm because I've always wanted to be it to be self-sufficient well that's a kind of a, a brief tour and information about the new barn uh, when we get a chance here in a minute we're gonna go out and visit some of the horses that you'll get you'll get to see and as you can already tell, Michael knows all about all of them. <laughs> so uh, thank you very much. I used to not like him because he beat Silver Charm out of the Triple Crown. But now I like him too. And some days when it's not so hot, we actually race. I mean, he beats me. And I don't really run very well. I never did. But you did, didn't you? As a, he... His nickname in the breeding shed was Hannibal Lecter because he liked to eat humans. But he's settled down a lot. Haven't you? We all settle down a lot when we reach a certain age. <laughs> we have that in common too, don't we, buddy? Huh? Yeah, we do. But he's an amazing racer. And it's really fun when his old jockeys come to the farm, like Chris McCarron, who rode him in the Belmont Road, another Hall of Famer, Chris. And Edgar Prado was here recently. He rode. We have two of his great Belmont winners here, uh, Birdstone and Sarava. And uh, when Gary Stevens comes to see Silver Charm, it's really great to hear him talk about Silver Charm and hear Chris McCarron talk about Touch Gold because you might think they're talking about two different events when they talk about the Triple Crown. Huh, you were, <laughs> he was so tough, this horse. He's got a great disposition, and we're very fortunate because we're kind of, uh, uh, Adina Springs have been very good about donating some of their retired stallions to us. I mean, among them, Awesome Again, uh, Alphabet Soup, Touch Gold, Einstein, huh? And you. And you. What do you think? What do you think? 
You think I have another Mrs. Pastures? You do? Okay, I do, you're right. Because you're smart. He settled down a lot. We put the horses that are a little bit more aggressive uh, in this paddock. This is where War Emblem was before he died, and he was probably the most aggressive horse we've ever had here. He, it was his way of the highway for sure. People call them mean, but it's an unfortunate word that they use for horses because no, there's no horses that are mean. You know, they just have two ways to communicate, you know, biting and kicking sometimes. And that's it. And, uh, and if they don't get what they want, they let you know in a hurry. But most of them are a little more laid back now. And we, when the visitors come, we tell them which ones are, are the most likely ones to create problems. But there's only one or two of them now. Bellamy Road, he likes to take a bite every once in a while. Of course, he's like his old owner, George Steinbrenner. <laughs> Has the same kind of disposition as George. But his daughter, Jessica Steinbrenner, gave us Bellamy Road, and she's really nice. And I'm an old Red Sox fan, but now that they've been so nice to us, and Joe Torrey, the former manager and Hall of Fame baseball player, has been here because he owned a portion of Game on Dude, who's over there with little Mike. And uh, so I'm having to be a lot nicer about the New York Yankees now <laughs> because of their representatives here. Right, buddy? You look great. You know, one of the things that's really nice now, too, we have such a great team here. They, they just really notice things right away if there's a problem. Um, I mean, like with little Mike this morning, he must have, you know, knocked something out of it. Must have banged his knee last night or his leg last night. And by this morning, they've already got it all wrapped up and have it all taken care of. And we're only 14 minutes from Root and Riddle. And so if there's a real problem, you know, we can get them over there in no time flat. Uh, Sally Vans comes and picks them up sometimes, and sometimes if it's a real emergency, we have our, our trailer over there and we can take them over ourselves. Uh, so the health care of these old horses, we're very fortunate to live where we live because the resources available to us are just phenomenal. And we treat them just like they're getting ready for the derby. Um, we have Green Mask here, a very fast horse, and he when he was working out to get ready for the Breeders' Cup, he smashed his leg and they, they put it all back together and it took a year and a half for them to put it, put it back together again, but they put it back together and now he's doing great. And he gets the same, same health care that we'd get as if he's getting ready for the Derby. And uh, we're very, that, as I say, that, that makes us very, very, very fortunate. And of course, you know, if, you know, we just lost Jerry Moss. We recently lost Bert Backrack. We had Bert's wonderful horse afternoon delights at the farm for a long time. And, and Alex Campbell, uh, who just died, he, he was a, a great supporter of ours. So the, the, the other thing that I didn't think of when we started this, when I started, I thought, oh, I'll have a few horses and be nice to them and whatever. Uh, wouldn't be a big deal. But you know, as it grew and it grew and it grew, it's like the snowball coming down the hill. You know, you just... By the time you turn around, it's not a snowball anymore. It's a, it's a Which boulder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that is hard, but we're we're doing a pretty good job. We've expanded a lot. So when we first had the farm, it was 52 acres, and then we bought 40 more acres in the back, and now we own the land all the way down to the traffic light. So that's how our population has grown. Now it's uh it's over 170 on this farm. Uh, we have about a dozen horses. Uh, over at uh, Ashton Grove, which is a senior citizen facility that was built on property once owned by Hill and Dale, and they had the barn and everything else, and they're, they're allowing us to have horses there in their green space. And I made a deal down the road here about a mile and a half with uh, Matt Welch, who's an enlightened developer, and he builds really nice homes and gives them a lot of space, and he actually plants trees <laughs> instead of taking them down. And we just made uh, arrangements with him to lease out or own, depending on how the deal goes, uh, hit the green space for a new development he's doing on the old Shirley Cunningham farm where, where Curlin and Einstein were born. So they have the green space and they can't build on it, so we can use it. And it apparently helps the housing prices and it certainly helps the horses. And then he sells it to us for a much reduced rate than, than we would have to pay if it was, uh, if it was open, open season. So. You know, that's, you know, just, there's just a whole lot of cooperation here. And that's one of the things the horses teach you, too, because when they come back and they form a herd, you know, the stallions all have to be separate. I, as I put it, I like, they like to have neighbors. They just don't want to have roommates. Yeah. So they have to be separate. But 
the rest of them, when they reform these herds and they see they get along and all these really competitive animals that spent their whole lives competing, now take a deep breath and relax and they realize now, now these other horses that they used to compete against are really their buddies. Yeah. And it's a, it's a fun transition. Yeah, really. Yeah. They can teach you a lot if, you, if you're not too stupid. <laughs> Camera is on. Okay. So this is Lava Man. Now he knows I got the Mrs. Pastures. <laughs> huh. He's so smart, and he's so sweet, and he's so nice, and he's so popular. It's really wonderful to see the people's faces here when they get to put, lay eyes on him and get to pet him and get to talk to him. Huh. They love seeing you, don't they, Loth? Huh? And as I said, he had a 21-year, he's now 22, I think, and he had 21, you know, he had a long career at, at, on the racetrack, and now in both uh, racing and, and ponying, and now he's here bossing us around, huh? And he loves, thank you for, Mrs. Pasha's probably never would have sent us those cookies if it wasn't for you. Huh, huh, <laughs> it's really sweet. I know, I got some more. You want some more? Want some more, hold on. Huh, yeah, I adore this horse. Huh. There's your buddy. See, and that's Ruler on Ice over there, the Belmont winner, who's his pal now. And the only time they have to be separated is when Lava Man wants to eat, because Ruler on Ice wants to eat everything. Because he's a pig, right, Lav? He's a pig. Huh. He's a pig. He's a pig. Yeah. Jose, I think we're done. Thank you. So here we are. We have a, a paddock full of old geldings here. One of them uh, is my horse, Summer Attraction, who I claimed in 1999. That's him over there paying no attention to me. I claimed for 1999 at Finger Lakes on Mother's Day for $3,500. But the most important thing today is that the people from the Kentucky Horseshoeing School are here. Now, as anybody knows, Really, when you're dealing with these horses, the two most important things are their digestive systems and their feet. If, if their feet go bad, they go bad in a hurry. And we're very fortunate that the Kentucky Horseshoeing School uh, comes here and takes care of these animals and does their trims every six weeks so that their, their, their podiatry is good. And then if they have really, uh, and they, then they can also recommend if some of the horses have uh, more difficult problems, uh, we can send them to uh, to the vet over at Rudin Riddle. So, first of all, we couldn't afford this kind of the kind of treatment that we get if they didn't do it, right? And uh, and we're kind of their final exam. So if they don't do well here, they they don't graduate. And who wants to repeat going to various school again when it's so tough in the first place? <laughs> Our latest girl, you'll like her story. Her name is Bold and Bossy. Her name is Bold and Bossy. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it's a great name, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Hi. Oh, that's good, huh? Look at here they look at look at come on. Here they come. Treats, treats, girls. Treats. Treats. Treats, treats all around. Yeah. Don't bite anybody. Try and be nice. That's it. That's it. Oh, this is a gelding. Poor narrow. Hey. So they have all this land to run around in and eat grass and do all these cool things. Like this Mrs. Pastures, don't you? I don't blame you. They come well recommended. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
There you go, sweetie. Here you go. But they're, look at that knee. Look at that knee. So sometimes you can come up here at night and watch them run around. They run just like they do at the track. Really? Yeah, they the the speedsters take the lead and the stalkers stalk and the closers close. Huh? How you doing, Tom? Yeah. Doing good, huh? Doing good, huh? How's this? How's this, huh? No? But Okay, I'm ready. So, Bill, this is a really wonderful, a wonderful filly named Bolden Bossy. People may not know her by that wonderful name, but she was a horse who was going to a while back at Ellis Park, and she decided that that day she didn't want to get in the gate, and she dumped a jockey and took off. And usually the outriders can catch them and put them back, and, but not her. She took off down the highway. And when she got to the entrance to the interstate, she went up to the entrance to the interstate. And she ran 10 miles. She may not have wanted to run on the racetrack that day, but she, we didn't have any trouble running. <laughs> and uh, they finally got her up at a shopping mall. I don't know what she was looking for, maybe something in the, I don't know, something in the Whole Foods department, huh? And uh, brought her back to the barn, put her in the receiving barn for the night. And unfortunately, that night, the barn burned down. And she escaped, but she had some pretty serious burns and some pretty, I know, you're adorable, and pretty, ser pretty serious injuries. But his, uh, his owner and his trainer just absolutely adored her, and they took great care of her. And now she's fully recovered. She has a few scars and things, and she's wearing, she's wearing that sheet so that uh, the scars from her burns don't get, don't get eaten up by the sun. So... I know, I love you too. You're so sweet. Yes, you are. You're so sweet. Yes, you are. <laughs> Isn't she pretty? Yeah. And she's so young. You know, you can really start to see the youth in some of the younger ones. I think she's four. Are you four? And uh, she's a. She's wonderful to have here at Old Friends. She's a, a new friend that'll soon become an old friend, and I hope she has a long life here. Right? That's the deal, isn't it? He goes, yeah, I'm going to outlive you, you bald-headed sack of trash. That's kind of like a loose interpretation of her, of her nonverbal cues. Huh. There's your pal down there, huh? That's her, his, that's her friend. That's Mora. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Bold and boss. So this silver charm he doesn't like to have his meals interrupted, and he calls the shots around here, so I, I'm, I don't want him to fire me. <laughs> he reminds me all the time. He goes, "Nobody's coming here to see you, you bald-headed sack of trash." <laughs> <laughs> I'm the king, and he is. He doesn't really say that. He's too nice to say. He might think it, but he doesn't say it. And silver charm is now 29 years old. The oldest living Breeders, uh, he's the oldest living uh, Derby winner and the oldest living Preakness winner. And probably in the best race he ever ran was against Swain in the Dubai World Cup. And they ended up almost in a photo finish. He beat Swain by an inch. And one of the thrills of my life was when we got Swain here. Swain has since passed away, but we got Swain here and we put him in the paddock right over there. And the idea that these two horses were at my in my yard is just un, un, unbelievable. He, um, I have the I have the photo finish photograph of Silver Charm and Swain hanging in my bedroom. You want to try this? What do you think? I think we're friends because I keep giving him the crumbs from Mrs. Pastures. He loves the crumbs, don't you? And again, his breeding's not much. Um, Silver Buck out of Bonnie's Poker. His mother's Bonnie's Poker is buried over there. We had a Bonnie's Poker long before we got Silver Charm. Uh, and she's an amazing story in herself. But uh, she wasn't a stakes winner or anything. She was, just a, she was just a tough, 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 tough racehorse. 
and uh, they they brought her to Silver Buck, and they get Silver Charm, and it's just unbelievable, huh? And uh, I think the horses that we have here that won all the big races, all the Breeders' Cup winners, and all the Classic winners and then the Grade One winners are all smarter than the other ones. I think it's the intelligence of the horse that matters more than more than anything, because a smart, tough horse like Touch Gold will run through glass to win a race. You know, he he ran on a very very bad foot in the Preakness that I don't think it healed by the time the Belmont rolled around. He still won the Belmont, so he was, War Emblem was tough and smart. Ruben was tough and smart. I mean, there are a lot of horses here. That are tough and smart. How, maybe we shouldn't get a buy a horse and name him Tough and Smart, though. What do you think? <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> we'll presume something. Huh. He likes me as long as I keep the crumbs here. Here, I'll put them in your dish. There you go, buddy. But I do think I'm the luckiest person around because... Nobody else gets to look out their back window like I do and see Silver Charm every day. Pretty cool, huh? And when he's down at the other end, I he won't come to he won't come to me to eat his crumbs unless I say I used to say he's the greatest horse in the world, but I have to say he's the greatest horse in the universe now because <laughs> he only comes if I say greatest horse in the universe. <laughs> Forget this world stuff, <laughs> huh? Doesn't he look great? He takes really good care of himself. And you saw the farrier school here earlier. You know, they come and take care of his feet and everybody dotes on him because he's so sweet. Huh? Yes, you are. You're so sweet. Can I didn't kiss? Thank you. You're so sweet, huh? You want more crumbs, huh? You want more crumbs. Okay, I'll get you some more crumbs. Well, this has been a great time going around the farm with you, uh, Bill. It's been a pleasure to talk with you and to all of your viewers and all of your listeners. And I hope they'll they'll come visit and see uh, old friends at the farm in Georgetown. Uh, we're open all the time. We like nothing better than to show people around and, and brag about these great old champions.